that slide before, it was not unusual. It was the, in fact, it was the norm for um, the Anglo-American countries in terms of how early childhood programs were, um, were offered. Uh, but now we're seeing different policy trends. And this is largely due, I must say, to the work um, of the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, which is the world's um, richest countries, of which Canada is a, um, is, is a member. And they did a uh, very extensive review of the early education programs in a number of their uh, member states. And they came out with what they call some policy lessons. And they've shared those with, uh, with policymakers uh, who are members of the OECD. And they looked at it in three areas, and that's uh, across the top, governance policy, the workforce, curriculum, and parents. And their lessons around gov governance was that, you, that if you actually want to address issues of access and quality, you should, somebody has to be in charge. So you do need a ministry that are an entity which has the lead for early, for early education and, and care. And that they should merge the functions of everybody who's involved so that there is a common policy framework there's a common um, in, uh, approach, and there's actually an ECE shop, policy shop, which is composed of people who really know about early, early um, education and, uh, and care, and that this is an area that actually needs uh, dedicated funding, De dedicated, stable, long-term funding, not funding that comes, you know, that you apply every year. You can't do the sort of community planning, social planning. You can't make those differences in, in community when you've got to apply year after year after year and the funding might come or might not come or it hasn't changed in amount in the last, in the last t uh, t decade. That you need a uh, policy, and this is interesting, that more and more jurisdictions are looking at the first tier of learning as not being zero to three or zero to four or zero to five, but zero to eight really that time in a child's life where they make the switch from learning to read to reading to learn. And that, the, that those sort of, that first tier is, uh, is there. A lot of attention is played to uh, quality, that you have a research and evaluation um, uh, uh, component, and that we reduce transitions. You know, like we, when you think about the number of transitions that children go through in terms of their programming between, you know, by the time they hit kindergarten, several different um, uh, transitions and big, and often, you know, big differences in, a, in approach to their programming between, you know, when they attended a, uh, um, a child care program when they were four, then what is expected of them when they turn five and are in uh, k uh, kindergarten. Much more attention is being paid to the EC workforce in terms of assuring that they are actually trained in early childhood. Um, narrowing the qualification gaps, often there's a big qualification gap between uh, the folks who teach kindergarten, the folks who work in other community-based uh, programs like childcare and family support uh, pr programs. That recognizing that this is an area which needs ongoing professional development, that this is a field that changes da uh, d daily, and that staff need the most up to date in information. And this was found to be very important, is actually recognizing the important work that this sector, that this sector does. The idea of having a curriculum, you should have one. Uh, this is relatively new, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll see that. It wasn't very long ago that we didn't have curriculum for many of our early childhood. Um, uh, pr uh, pr programs, and the idea that these are living docs. It's not that you develop a program and then it sits there and you look at it 10 years later, that these are really uh, programs that need the documents that need to be lived. And then finally looking at, um, at parents. So what can we do to improve access? And jurisdictions are looking at, at very different uh, ways. Some are bringing this, you know, the um, access to, to schooling, uh, lowering it to include children three and four years old. They're putting uh, you know, ceilings on what fees are and providing um, more, more support. And a, a big emphasis now on the fact that early childhood programs, including kindergarten, shouldn't be a place where you drop the kid at the door and parents aren't welcomed in. That in fact, that these are family programs um, and that, that they really do need this open door policies. So when we look at it um, more uh, on a Canadian uh, c context, we can see some of the movement that's, that's taken place. So um, 
ECE under common uh, ministry, we now have one, two, three, four, five, six of the, and this is, I'm sorry, this is only the, the uh, provinces that are, are showing here. Uh, if we were showing the territories, uh, the uh, Northwest Territories would be there as, as well. Um, is there a common supervisory uh, unit? You see what's happening there. Is there a common policy um, framework for all early years uh, programming? We're looking at it there. And then what's happening on, on, the, on the ground? May not be such a big issue in, um, in, in the, the Yukon, but for bigger provinces with a more scattered um, population, it becomes a, uh, it becomes a big issue. Um, what we're seeing is that um, full day kindergarten is now the norm. When we did this, uh, the 2007 study, only three jurisdictions in Canada had um, offered full day uh, kindergarten. Now the majority of, uh, of jurisdictions do, and now 80% of five-year-olds now attend a full day pr program. We're seeing schools get much more uh, proactive in um, including four-year-olds in, um, in, their, in their programming. Ontario is uh, moving to universal uh, junior kindergarten for all four-year-olds. That should be in place by, by 2015. And four-year-old kindergarten is under consideration in, uh, in Quebec. Here I'm missing it. Um, the Ministries of Education in Ontario, BC, and the Yukon uh, support school-based programs for parents and, uh, and preschoolers. That's your Learn, uh, learn Together uh, program there. And this is very almost, as I've seen, almost all programs have developed a curriculum frameworks for early childhood that's based on play. Um, and again, that was very different. When we were um, talking to kindergarten teachers in 2006, we would hear that um, uh, you know, if they wanted to bring plasticine into their classrooms, that you know, they had to make sure that it was going to be forming letters or numbers, right? And now the curriculum, fra the the kindergarten program uh, fr curriculum frameworks are are guided by by play, and the ministers of education uh, just released a, um, a a paper which recognizes play as being essential to the first tier of of learning. So you know, in a relatively short time. A big difference, and it's it's, it's a it's a big difference because it's really important to the way that young children learn and uh, learn and grow. But it's also important for the field because it means that we're not as fragmented. It means that we don't have these very different approaches, or we're not required to have these very different approaches about how we um, how we uh, react to young children and and uh, and f families. Again, sorry. Again, we looked at that learning um, continuum going through to grade three. Um, a lot of attention has been played to the uh, status of the early childhood workforce, and I know that you and the Yukon have done a lot of work on, on, on that. Um, the first early years study in 1999 called for a population monitoring tool um, that was developed. It's now the early development uh, in instrument. It, I, it's used um, in many parts of, uh, in most of uh, uh, Canada. You now it's being used here in the, in the Yukon and really around the uh, world. And we're maintaining for accountability, uh, the jurisdictions are reporting out on their, um, on their investments. So when we looked in uh, 2006, I mean, one of the things that the OEC did is give Canada a spanking for the uh, very low levels of investment that it had in early childhood education and care, that we were the, of all of our OECD partners, we were the least um, likely to uh, invest in uh, ECE. Our kids were the least likely to attend um, an ECE pro uh, program. But what we're seeing um, now is um, actually that, um, that in 2006, across the country, federal and provincial governments devoted about $3.5 billion to early education and care. Now it's 7.5, so it's more than doubled. It's not the 15 billion that the OECD suggests that we um, uh, put into, uh, into the, this area, but it's still, um, it's still a big boost. And I'm happy to say that when we look at the 2013 budgets across the, um, across the country, that although jurisdictions may see the needs to cut in other areas, no jurisdiction has cut in, in this area.
No one has cut early childhood education care. In fact, many have increased their investments in early childhood education care, even if they're having um, difficulties. So this is looking at um, ECE as a percentage of your total budget. So that's, that is like what you're spending on, ki on kindergarten, what you're spending on childcare, um, what you're spending on programs like the uh, uh, learning uh, to, uh, to together. Uh, so it gives you, um, it gives you a comparison. Uh, again, as I've said in 2006, the OECD found a, um, a small number of children, uh, about 25% of kids were regularly attending an ECE pr program, and this is two to four-year-olds. We haven't included five-year-olds because most five-year-olds were already in kindergarten. We haven't included, you know, uh, infants because they're not very likely to attend um, um, anyway. And so across the country, um, from 25% of kids regularly attending an ECE program, we're now up to about 52%. And as you can see, the Yukon is above the uh, national average. So those are your children that are attending kindergarten, pre-K, Aboriginal Head Start, learning uh, together, and in your group child, and in your group child care pr programs. So um, you know, you're well on your way. Uh, again, more attention to, to monitoring. Here's, the, here's EDI. This was our, um, out of the 2011 report, if we were to give, show you this map today, uh, you would see that um, uh, the Northwest Territories, Quebec, Newfoundland, and Nova Scotia have all agreed to do regular use of the EDI. At this, at this point, they had only field tested it. And so this then brings us to the early education re report, and if I can give you some caveats about that, is when you do comparisons across Canada, it's a difficult thing to do. We do not have, as you all know, really a national frame framework for early education and care. Each jurisdiction keeps its own numbers, and you all keep your numbers in a very different way, making life for us researchers very, very difficult. Uh, but we, uh, we uh, do our best. So we, what we did is we took the OECD's policy lessons and applied them to a Canadian uh, uh, context and, look at, and looked at benchmarks. So what was reasonable for um, jurisdictions in Canada to have, a, uh, to have achieved? Because, you know, when we get compared internationally, we're sort of, we barely make it onto the, onto the radar screen. So it doesn't become a very useful tool for policymakers are for the sector who really feels like we're running as fast as we can and we're not get, getting anywhere. So we really wanted to be able to provide a tool which allowed um, jurisdictions to see where they lined up in comparison to, uh, to one another. So the first thing that we looked at was gut, gut governance. You know, is there a coherent governance structure? Is there a common policy fr uh, fr framework? Are, you know, our, uh, is early childhood divided across multiple um, uh, s sectors? We looked at funding. Is it at a reasonable level to provide um, reasonable access and, uh, and, uh, and, co and quality? Is it, um, so we see there. Uh, we looked at, at access. What is the percent, do at least 50% of kids attend an early childhood pro program? Are there policies in place to ensure that children with special needs also have access to early childhood? Um, this looks at, the next one looks at the learning envir environment. Um, is there, um, how are staff, co um, how are staff uh, c compensated? What's the training, training levels? Is there a curriculum in place? Here, look there. And the final one was monitoring. So out of a 15-point scale, um, we see that Quebec comes in first at, um, at 10. Um, PI is only behind at about uh, 9.5. 9 again, this was in 2011. We will be um, putting the report out again in 2014, and you're already going to be seeing some real movement on those, um, in, in these areas, as again, we see that with the funding, jurisdictions really start to pay um, important not only uh, attention not only to what they spend, but how they spend, and trying to ensure that they spend smart. Oh, sorry, that's the final. 
You probably thought my math was out there. Yes, okay, that's the final numbers. So what the report does is it provides a snapshot. It allows, as I said, it allows jurisdictions to, um, to compare themselves to their, uh, to, to their neighbors. It doesn't say that there's only one way to get to 15, um, because if you look at Quebec and you look at PEI, uh, they took very different, different routes. What we know from this is that also that it can happen fast. Because again, if we had done this in 2006, it would have been a very different story there, um, uh, there, there as, as well. We have the example of PI that in you know, three short years really flipped its early education system um, around from a, what was largely a market-driven, commercial-dominated um, commercial uh, sector into one that's highly publicly managed. PI had no school-operated ki kindergarten. Uh, it now has a full-day kindergarten offered by, um, by ECEs. And that's perfect timing because I'm right, I'm right there. Um, this, is a, this is a doc that you should uh, be aware of. It was put out by the Association of Canadian Deans of, of Education. I'm saying that it's important because um, these are the folks that train the next generation of uh, school educators and, uh, and, and policy makers. And, you know, for those of us, and I'm from the child care side of early, early education, you know, we, we, are, we tend to be suspicious of education for its rigidity and its bureaucracy and, sorry, Minister, um, you know, those, those sorts of things. We're very worried that if um, ECE ends up with education that they'll, you know, push those academic, um, you know, requirements down on younger and younger kids. And what this is saying is, no, that's, that's not the case, that really play-based learning, um, those rich learning, nurturing um, environments really have to be at the core of, uh, of, of training of, for the next, uh, for the next uh, generation. And what we find in a number of, in our own work in uh, Canada with the McCain Foundation and work that we were involved in in Ontario, advised on in uh, Australia and the, and the UK is that when um, early education and childcare merge, that the big difference doesn't happen in childcare, the big difference happens in education. That in fact, education gets more responsive, it gets more nurturing. Uh, schools tend to open up their doors more to invite families in. They tend to become more family folk, more family centers than places where kids go and the doors are closed between uh, not nine and three. So that we have this, so what we really have, and you know, next to health, most of our budgets go to education, right? So what we, what you know, policymakers are thinking about as they move, as they move forward, is whether to. Um, they know, they all agree that we need to build in this area. They all know the brain story. They're, all, they're excited, but it's then in a policy way, how do you move forward? And do you move forward by, um, by building onto your existing childcare, or do you use the asset that you already have in, uh, in pu public education? Um, and uh, and those, are the, you know, those are the choices that are yours to make depending on what your uh, depending on what your circumstances are. Uh, my final word to you is if you want the complete study, you can get it there, it's online, it's downloadable. Um, we do provide um, something at the um, Atkinson Center at OISE, and this is an early education monitor, and this is where we you know, track the latest research, the latest policy developments, both in Canada and around the uh, globe, if you want to check with that. And if you have any questions for me, you can get me there. Thank you very much for being so attentive through a long and dense.